أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن يشكر لله ومن يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم respected sisters and brothers سلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I hope and pray to the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى that you're all in the best of health strong iman and you know enjoying the experience of the month of Ramadan in these difficult challenging times but also times full of opportunity of course now this man is mentioned twice by name in the Holy Quran his dialogue with his sons contain valuable lessons for all of us and indeed he's giving an example as a person who attained wisdom and a role model for all human beings Luqman al-Hakim or Luqman the Wise is a description given to an individual whom the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran and chapter 31 is indeed named after him. Across eight verses of this particular holy chapter, a great deal of important and valuable instruction is given to us all based on the individual, this individual's life, Luqman. And when we look at the Holy Quran, it really presents to us stories of uh, individuals such as holy prophets and those who may consider to be non-prophets in order for humankind to take heed and to follow their examples. The stories of the Holy Quran are fascinating and they're unique for two reasons. Number one, because they're from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no doubt that they are absolutely truthful. So there is no element of falsehood to them whatsoever. Whatever is mentioned in the Quran is absolute truth. And number two, they're only mentioned in the holy book because they serve as important for us to live through them throughout our lives. So Allah Taala would not mention a story that's only relevant for 1400 years ago or for people of this age, etc. It's actually an ongoing constitution for well-being and strengthening ourselves until the day of Qiyamah. Last month of Ramadan, I was blessed to be in Mombasa. And I, alhamdulillah, began a series of lectures uh, discussing non-prophetic stories of the Holy Quran. So I looked at, for example, Ashab al-Kahf, Ashab al-Ukhdud, the believer of Yasin, for example. And I was analyzing these stories based on Quranic uh, principles and going through them just like a tafsir so to speak but more so with a thematic uh, objective to look at some aspects and to touch you know really on some key issues uh, I was not able to complete the series um, and uh, I was thinking that some of the lectures presented to uh, the wonderful community of Wessex Jamaat this holy month of Ramadan it would be focused on some of the uh, uh, stories that I was not able to cover uh, last year so that inshallah we can have a better understanding because remember the stories of Prophet Yusuf, Yunus, Yus, uh, Ya'qub, um, Musa alayhi salam, Dawood, Sulaiman, all these that are found in the Quran, 25 of them, are tremendous. They are so powerful. They're so inspirational. But we also have stories of people who are not prophets and necessarily they were not good either. And we are told to ex indeed look at what they achieved uh, for those who are good and learn from them and what those who were bad not to fall into the same error or mistake of what they actually did so I would like to over the next uh, few nights examine the story of Luqman look at uh, you know some dimensions of his story but more Quranically so that we can pick from it whatever we can and I'd like to invite the Mu'minin and Mu'minat listening to this watching this to make notes as much as they can uh, so that it will be beneficial remember these taking of notes are helpful why because they will help you even to teach this 
to others in the future. And that's one of the best ways to supplement and to, um, you know, really make the, the understandings clear in our minds too. Um, when we examine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words, we find that um, Allah does not normally mention names of non-prophets. Um, for example, Uzair is not mentioned by name. Uh, simply referred to أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها or the one who, who passed by a village and saw everything destroyed one on top of the other. Khidr alayhi salam, his name is not mentioned in the Holy Quran. Abdum min ibadina atainahu rahmatan min indina wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma. Allah says, but you know, this individual, we have chosen him, we have given him this ilmu ladunni, you know, and uh, we have granted him with, uh, mercy from amongst us. So to be mentioned in the Quran is a great honor. And just how many, imagine how many billions of people will know, you know, this person for centuries. Luqman has become renowned and world famous now because Allah has chosen that his name is preserved and included in the Holy Quran, which is in itself something fantastic. Now, what are the opinions of scholars with regards to Luqman? Was he a prophet? or not a prophet? Who is he? What is his background? Some believe that he was not a prophet, but a wise individual. And this is a majority opinion, since normally the Quran highlights the tabligh role, you know, the propagation, the spreading of the teachings of the religion of Tawheed and monotheism. Normally that's highlighted uh, for a prophet or a messenger. Um, they may have a leadership role, so to speak. When we examine the verses related to Luqman, this is not actually uh, mentioned. Um, some believe that he was an Abyssinian servant at the time of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Later, when people saw his wisdom, they asked, were you not a shepherd? He said, yes, I was. Then say, they say, how, you know, how did you attain this position? Uh, Allah's decree or, you know, wisdom. And he would say, Ada'ul amana. I fulfilled my trust. I was a trustworthy individual. Wasitqul hadith. I was truthful in my words. Wasamtu amma la yu'anini. And to be silent and not worry, not concerned about that which does not affect me. Now, just looking at those three important qualities that Luqman has mentioned. Yes, Ada'ul Amana to be trustworthy. When people entrust us with uh, things, for example, to look after or entrust us with people or thoughts or concepts, or they give us a loan, for instance, we need to be able to honor it back and pay it back, for example. To be truthful, Sidqul Hadith, not only in words, but in our actions. No doubt there is so much that can be said. But the final point that Luqman mentions is to be concerned with one's own affairs and not necessarily intrude and be nosy and spying or to constantly want gossip about others. Well, we live in a society where sometimes because of the availability of uh, tools such as social media and the phone, we're constantly intrigued to dig deeper into the lives of others, to discuss the lives of others with other people, to expose others. These are, of course, quite catastrophically dangerous for a believer, for an individual, you know, and the Quran condemns it, no doubt, that we need to really respect the sanctity and the sacredness of, of other believers and not necessarily uh, busy ourselves. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu alaykum anfusakum, the Quran says. Oh, you believe, look after yourself. Don't worry about others. La yadurrukum man dalla idha htadaytum. It will not harm you, hurt you when people go astray as long as you are on the right path, if you are being guided. Yes, so that's the important thing. In Majma'ul Bayan, this famous uh, tafsir by Allama Tabarsi, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is reported to have said, Haqqan aqul, I say for truth, Lam yakun Luqmanu nabiyya. Luqman was not a prophet. Wa kana abdan kafiru tafakkur. Yes, a man who reflected a lot, pondered a lot, was introspecting a lot. 
حسن اليقين A person who developed certainty in the right way أحب الله وأحبه He loved Allah and Allah loved him back ومن عليه بالحكمة And Allah then bestowed upon him wisdom So tafakkur is again here mentioned by the Prophet as a key quality of Luqman as a person who constantly was thinking now thinking the quality of our contemplation needs to be uh, pondered upon what do I think about you hear about all these emphasis about constantly being reflecting and pondering and contemplation but what should I be reflecting upon well Amir Mu'mini says Rahimallah Imran Arafa min ayn wa fi ayn wa ila ayn peace and blessings be upon the individual who knows where they came from where are they now and where are they actually going? How am I going to safeguard my akhirah? How am I going to live my life in a dignified way accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands? What are the challenges I face in this particular aspect? How am I going to help others? What difference am I going to make? How am I going to positively change myself as well as others? As well as so many things that should be going in through our minds continuously in this self-development process towards the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we have a wonderful, interesting story in the same hadith in Majma'ul Bayan, which highlights, you know, how Malaika visited Luqman. It is said that he was once in the middle of the day, you know, so-called Qaylula, when you have a like a, a siesta, so to speak. You know, you sleep a little bit in the, in the uh, midday. He heard something. Ya Luqman. هل لك أن يجعلك الله خليفة تحكم بين الناس بالحق؟ أو لقمان Do you want Allah to make you his representative so that you do حكم you rule amongst the people with truthfulness by the truth؟ لقمان answered إن خيرني ربي قبلت العافية ولم أقبل البلاء If Allah is giving me a choice I prefer not I'd like to take the other one which is to give me somehow well-being and it's not a test. If Allah says I have to be, then I will be obedient. If Allah has chosen me as a prophet, then I will oblige. But if I'm given a choice, then no. Luqman doesn't want it, basically. He doesn't want it. He was asked by the Malaika, why don't you want to be a prophet? Why don't you want to be somebody who has taken this responsibility? He says, you know, because to rule is difficult and volm to oppress, you know, is very close to it. You know, that's why in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Rabbil Alameen means the lords of all nations. And he says, the all benevolent, the all merciful. Now, interestingly, why this Rahman Ar-Rahim is after Rabbil Alameen? And before Maliki Yawm al Because a lot of human beings who are kings and rulers are usually oppressive, they're usually unjust, they usually take away the rights of others. So Luqman doesn't want it. He says, you know, if I'm successful, then great, but I have to be very, very careful because it is better to be humiliated in dunya and actually honored in akhirah. So when he woke up, we are told Allah wa ta'ala bestowed upon him um, wisdom and gave him hikmah. Now, it is said that he, Luqman, was Prophet Ayyub's nephew. And, you know, some narration says he possibly met something like 400 prophets. Uh, this was uh, Prophet, um, uh, this was Luqman al Hakim, of course. And due to his wisdom bestowed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Many, many narrations are presented to us regarding advice or recommendation that Luqman would give. You know, um, for example, in one particular narration, it is said that Luqman was told, bring me the most delicious two parts of sheep. One king once told him, bring me the most delicious two parts of the sheep. And he bought the heart and the tongue. And he told me, bring me the most distasteful parts of the sheep and he bought him again the heart and the tongue and this man the king asked him why you both occasions you bought the heart and the tongue he says well if the heart and the tongue are pure it's the most delicious and if they are impure it's the most distasteful he's saying you know you can through your heart and your tongue achieve excellence brilliance be the best and at the same time through the heart and the tongue be the worst of the worst 
and indeed that is indicative of his wonderful wisdom inshallah ta'ala we will continue his story especially focusing on the holy quran and the whole concept of wisdom next time wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi at-tayyibin at-tahirin